Alberta. Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and we have someone who has become a good friend and, and actually a member of the church where I pastor, um, Dr. Evelyn Nelson. Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. Good. It's nice to be on air today with you. Yes, no, no. Well, it's an honor, honor to have you, and, and again, I've just been so impressed with you and with your background, and, and you're a retired professor of NYU, but you're so much, uh, so much more. So as always, I want to begin with your beginning. Where did you grow up, and where did you go to school, and how did you get into what you're doing? Well, actually, I grew up in uh, Newark, New Jersey, uh -huh. and I went to local schools in New Jersey. Okay. Well, and, um, what town? What town in North New Jer Jersey? I, I, I lived on, I guess you would say, the east side. My high school was east side high oh, school. In Newark. Those days they had an east side, a west side, and the south side. Yeah. So I went to east side school. Mm -hmm. In Newark. Okay, good, good. And so you went to east side. Yes. And, then, and, and then what about college? Where did you go to college? Well, I went to Bloomfield College in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Oh, wonderful. But I went to college a lot later than most people would go. Um, I already had my family at that time, mm -hmm. and um, it was sort of like an adventure <laughs> because I wanted to go long before but you know family life and, and life just took over so that wasn't possible for me to do right after high school like most people would think um, the route you would go so I went to Bloomfield College but it was much later in life the, as an uh, adult with a family. Well sometimes that's better sometimes you appreciate it more when you go you know when you go a little later you've had some life experience but life gets in the way of so many different things so so Bloomfield College and so what what did you do before graduate school what did you do between there and and how did you one of the things I, I asked this question because we have a lot of young people and others watching to say hey I want to be just like mm -hmm. her or, or you know so yeah tell me about that so after college what what did you do? Well well it uh, it was a decision that I had to make uh, based on family life and um, whether or not I could do it or not. So I, my husband was very supportive. My family was very supportive. And at the time, I was actually working in a dental office. So I was working in a dental office as a, a receptionist, assistant, whatever yeah. needed to be done, office manager. Nice. And nice. it was a prominent uh, um, a professional building and private practice in East Orange, New Jersey. Okay. And... Um, I worked there for many, many, many years, and then I, I, I had a knack for. I didn't know when I started working at this dental office. I was actually, um, let me see, I was twenty-one years old. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was twenty-one years old, and I, I, I didn't know what I was going to get myself into. I'm going like, I don't know if I can sit here and watch somebody's tooth come out of their head, you know? Right, right. But um, it turns out I had a pretty good knack for it. And over the years, and working in the office of Dr. Philip W. G., he was a general practitioner okay. at uh, what was called then Central Parkway Professional Building on Central Avenue in East Orange. Okay. I um, often was told by many of my patients, you should be a dentist, you should be a dentist. And I said, not on your life, wow. you know, <laughs> wow. because I was thinking about the time that it would take to educate myself in that field. Yes. But I did have a knack for it, and I did have a passion for it. And I always wanted to be someone who could help people right, right. In, um, in the health field, somewhere in the health field. I was right. always looking in that direction. Right. Well, well, but, 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 but it's interesting. To do that. But it's interesting. So, again, it's, so you're starting out your reception. Is it's sometimes people see things in us that we don't see in ourselves. And that's they saw true. your passion. And, so, uh, and I, that's why I love this story because everybody thinks everything's a straight line. Well, I went to school and I knew I always knew I wanted to be a dentist and I did this, but no, exactly. everybody's line is up and down and up and down. And that's, that's the beauty of life. And so appreciate it, yes. appreciate it. And so, yes. all right, so, so you, you got that push and, and what made you go back to school or what, what, what was it that made you say, hey, maybe they're right? It was the encouragement that I got from my family, mm -hmm. the encouragement that I got for the doctors in that building were all working together. There was a building that was a, Actually, it was the first uh, uh, all-black professional building in New in, mm -hmm. in East Orange, New Jersey. Oh wow! Really? And uh, all of the doctors in there were partners in the building of that building. Okay. And um, so I had a, a a good relationship with everybody there: mm -hmm. the der dermatologist, the oral surgeon, the pedi pedi pediatric uh, doctor. 
So it was encouraging, you know, with all of those on board and the doctor I was actually working for. Right. Were encouraging, and so I said, "Well, let me just try it. Let me just make an application to Bluefield College and see what happens." Nice, wonderful, and so and you did it, and so you went through college. Did you find college pretty easy? Were you did you have a knack for it? Did you think, or was it a lot of work? Yes, I I, I, I found it easy, mm -hmm. um, only because I'm spending my own money, not my parents' money. <laughs> right, right. It's funny how yes. that makes a difference. And it, the um, and it was. Um, convenient because I had a very good uh, uh, health, uh, not health, but uh, uh, babysitter, uh -huh. if you want to call it that, but she was um, um, uh, professional in that sense that she knew how to take care of kids, right. and I was very comfortable with her being uh, there for me, and my husband, of course, stepped in, did a lot of things that I would need to do right. if I were there. So um, I felt it easy enough, right. and it was so crazy because I'm going, I'm like, I think I was in my 30s, I mm -hmm. was in my 30s, and I said, well, I don't know if this is going to work because these young minds are coming straight out of school, right. and they're, you know, it's, it, they're ready for this. I'm right. not sure if I'm ready for it or not, so I decided wherever I was, whatever class I was in, I was going to sit right up in the front so I wouldn't be distracted. Right. <laughs> and right. so that I could pay attention and do what I needed to do. So that first year, I was pretty nervous about it, but mm -hmm. I studied all the time. And my mother used to say, even Christmas dinner, I'd come with my books after Christmas dinner, I would disappear and I would be studying. Wow. So, wow. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it was in my first year. So after your first year, I think it's the first uh, or second um term I decided on my major uh -huh. and it was only after my first few tests because you have to take all the basic sciences first right so right. I was really hesitant about one particular subject which was chemistry yeah. mm -hmm. when I was in high school uh -huh. chemistry was my worst subject I got A's and B's and everything except chemistry right interesting and Yes, <laughs> and um, there was a professor there that wasn't very encouraging, and I really believe, and I still believe, that he was of the type that believed women didn't have a place in science. Oh, interesting, interesting. So, wow. uh, the, the, uh, it was very, um, it was very discouraging, and that, that's why I was afraid of that one course. Right. So I was determined that I really do really well in that course. Okay. And, and believe it or not, um, Pastor Caldwell, it was that course that really gave me the encouragement that I could go on ah, because gotcha. I had wonderful instructor, right, and I had a wonderful uh, mentor, right, and the very first test that I took, I can't, I, I got a ninety-eight on that course, really? wow, wow, uh, wow, on that wow. test, and the doctor said very good, right. Then the next test that we took, I kept getting, all my grades were in the 90s and high 90s. Okay. So on one of the tests, he wrote across the page, uh -huh. um, uh, he says, think medic. <laughs> he said, think medical. So right. um, he was uh, very encouraging. His name was right. Dr. Winokur. Okay. And um, I'll never forget that name because he was the one that said, he wrote, think med, all across the page. Really? Interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And so at that point in time, I think it was in that second uh, semester, I decided to change my major to chemistry. Wow. Wow. And, and it's in and, yeah. and, and Orgo, they often say Orgo separates the, the doctors from everybody else. Organic chemistry <laughs> it was always the one. So uh, yes, uh, and yeah. I actually love that was one of my favorite courses, organic chemistry. Well, I really the, loved that course. The, the, but that's and it when was you like, know. You're getting your hands in it. You're getting your hands and you're learning a lot of stuff. That right. I still recognize and understand today because of that course. Right. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So, that, but that's that's when you know your your doctor material when you do when you enjoy organic <laughs> chemistry. I've learned that's that's a real test for any kind of. All right. So you did that. So so what about um, you know medical school? Tell me tell me what yes, what happened next? Well, yeah. you know. I, so I finished school and um, I got I finished at Bloomfield College. Um, um, as a general chemist. 
right. general, in general, uh, general chem, chemistry. And I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to go into dentistry or stay with chemistry because right. I was interested in forensic chemistry. Okay. Okay. You know, so I, I, I sort of had an inclination for that. Right. But those are the two things I was thinking about when I came out. And then okay. with the encouragement, again, looking at where I was and um, how far I had gone. And all the time I was in um, school, I did five years. I did my whole four years and five years going part time. Right, right. So, so every semester I was in school. So right. um, I graduated summa cum laude nice. with a chemistry Wonderful. degree. A wow. general chemistry degree okay. from Bloomfield College. And so you decided you and decided on on dentistry. So we're going to have to take a break okay. shortly. But uh, so you decided to go uh, go to go to the dentistry route. So what, let's let's take that, a break, and then we'll we'll hear mm -hmm. more about about dentistry. And so uh, we'll be okay. right back with Entrepreneur okay. State of Mind, and Dr. Evelyn Nelson. Okay. Thank you. I'm Bob Hokertle from Kings Road Brewing Company. I'm here to tell you about a brand new show on RVN television called Cooking with the King. Each week, we're going to taste and sample some of the best beer the Kings Road Brewing Company has to offer. And we're gonna to talk to area chefs and restaurant owners as we pair our beer with their signature dishes. We're going to teach you how to cook and eat like a king. Cheers. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, with uh, Dr. Evelyn Nelson. And so she had just told me, which is a great story on how she uh, got into uh, uh, chemistry and then on to dentistry. And so where did you do your dentistry work and what did you do after, immediately after, uh, after dentistry? Immediately after dentistry, I still continued to, um, um, immediately after uh, graduating from college, I started working in um, um, the dental office on Saturdays, and then I started uh, my um, my time at uh, University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey. Oh, UMD and J. Okay, so, yes, all right. Yes, so I, that was my school. I went there, Wonderful. and while I was there, I was working still in the dental office. Okay, and okay. I went yes, and there was a person who came and did a um, a conference, and I went to a conference, and this gentleman said to me, his name was Dr. Ralph Katz. He said. You have an inclination. You have a, a, you. I think you'll do good right. in the profession of dentistry. And so, he, he was another encouraging person. So when I graduated from, from college, and I started my time at University of Medicine and Dentistry, actually there was a scholarship that was earmarked for someone else. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised because when I went to University of Medicine and Dentistry, right in the heart of Newark, right. I thought I would see more people that looked like me. Right, right. <laughs> but right. I didn't. But you didn't. And so, yeah. as it turns out, the person that was supposed to get the scholarship did not finish school in time. He was going to need a half a year to catch up. And so the scholarship was actually offered to me. Wow. And so that was a real benefit for me and to God you're looking out for me right right somewhere and, somewhere yeah. scholarship and, and, and that helped you through in front of me. so that really that really yes. helped you through so all right so you graduate from UMD and J where was your first job my first job was back where I started in the dental office of Dr. Philip G I had a private practice there wow okay East yes I was there for oh my goodness for maybe about six or seven years practicing there okay and then um then I met someone who um, I had a, you know, I still have this curious mind. So that's where I met Dr. Ralph Katz and okay. started working from there on research projects. And, st and I was part of that research uh, group. Nice. And okay. as time went on, he encouraged me to make application to NIH. Okay. Um, um, uh, underrepresented. Um, postdoctoral training program. Okay. And, and I. And that's the National Institute that. of Health, right? The National Institute of Health, NIH, right? That's correct. Okay. That's and right. and so Boston, you did. Yes. So so you did that. Yes. And so uh, yes. uh, well, that that's a great honor. I mean, to to really do that. Yes. And, and so, uh, how long did you do that for? It was a five-year program. Oh, wow! Really? Wow! And uh, I had the opportunity to work at different universities. I worked at the University of. Um, of uh, Connecticut, as well as the University of um, 
New Jersey uh, Dental School, okay. New York DJ, and then as well as right. NYU. Oh, wow. So okay. when I finished my training um, and, and mastered, got my master's in public health, um, then I started <laughs> uh, working. I got a job application for working exclusively at NYU. Okay. So at NYU, I started as an independent contractor working in research um, areas of oral surgery, actually. Right. Oh, wow. Um, wow. There were uh, some problems that they needed solved, some tightening up of research versus clinical work, that yeah. kind of thing. So I was brought in to sort of straighten out the paperwork, so to speak, wow. as a researcher. So that was an independent contractor for NYU for two years in that capacity. And then at that point in time, at a later point in time, I was offered a position there oh, as an assistant clinical professor. Really? What? And, and, just, and, yes. And, 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 and part, so part of this whole entrepreneurial mindset is, uh, so you were a receptionist at a dental office, and then you became a dentist in that office, then you became a researcher. Yes. So, so, so part, of the, part of the thing, I see too many people, especially women, who say, well, I'm just a receptionist, I'm just a secretary. And they don't know these stories of people who've become lawyers, who've become doctors, who've become... Right. And so I love that story, and that's an entrepreneurial state of mind, a way to think yeah. about that. It's not... And so I love that. And so how long were you at NYU before you retired? I started at NYU in uh, 1999, uh -huh. and I just I just retired this um, year before um, July 1st, 2021. Wow! So wow! I, That's uh, I, you're still young, so you yeah. still have a lot of a lot of time ahead of you. And so, so what were some of the interesting things that you did at, at NYU? You know, well, at NYU, I was able to mentor other students. Mm. I was a part of the admissions committee. Um, that was very interesting, um, not only for the general population, the general dentist program, but also for the advanced program. Right. And I was um, a, a clinical floor um, in charge of the daily care that we are teaching our students to um, right. okay. employ at the dental school. They do the work. Right. And we we stand behind them to guide them, you know, correct them, right. intervene when necessary, that kind of thing, because the students actually do the work. Right. But um, the training is coming from the faculty. Right. And so as faculty, you're responsible for that training. So we teach. We do a lot of other things. We hold, um, I did as well as others, um, whole class classes. Mm -hmm. Some of those classes were very early in the morning, like seven o'clock right, right. in the morning. Can you imagine going to a class at seven o'clock? And I live in New Jersey and I got to get to New York by seven o'clock. By so seven a.m. That's A that's, lot of the early mornings, yeah. I just got used to it. <laughs> yeah, that's getting up at four. So, so what advice do you have? So that, you know, a young person that wants to get in the medical profession and, you know, what do you know now that you'd like to impart on people who have this entrepreneurial mindset that, hey, I want to have my own practice. I want to do that. What, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that, that you would advice you would mm -hmm. give to, to young people who are, who are pursuing this career? Well, certainly I would say don't give up. Right. If this is something that you want to do. Um, hold up. I'm sorry. There's mm -hmm. an interruption here. Mm -hmm. no yeah, and so I, I mean, I just think it's so important because you are, you know, you, you have modeled um, you know, a, a, a career success. And so, yeah, so what, what, yeah, what are some of the things, too, that, that, that well, people should know? Some of the things I would say would certainly not give up on your dream because right. in, I think the initial thing you feel that you want to do right. is the thing you really want to do. And I always wanted to be in the medical profession right. doing something to help people. But I didn't see that in the beginning. I know right. it was a dream of mine, but right. I didn't see that in the beginning. And don't let uh, finances get in the way because right. if you do your right. best, it, I got scholarships without even trying, just for having good grades. Right. That's where my scholar, every scholarship I ever got was because of my uh, my drive to just do the best I can while I'm there. Right. I'm not just in school. I'm there to make a difference. And so keep that in mind. Right. And don't give up and look into other things that you might find that are connected to that right you know there was no I, I don't think there was any mystery that i took that job the reason i took that job initially with uh, the dental office at the age of 21 mm -hmm. was because it was a it was by chance 
because before that I was working at a place called Newark Evening News Publishing Company. I was a programmer for oh, really? uh, okay. their uh, for their um, mm -hmm. um, final notice program. So okay. I was working with IBM, those oh, really? kinds of things. Okay. Um, Univac computers, writing programs for a publishing wow. company. Wow. And um, after I had my first child was when I was on my little short sabbatical, and then that's when I saw this uh, ad in the paper right. asking for a dental assistant no experience necessary and it right. was close by my house i could actually walk there wow if i didn't have a car and that opportunity i took i said oh well i always wanted to do let me just see what it's about right and that's exactly what happened well, well, and well, that's but, why i got hooked <laughs> I but, got but, hooked but that's the industry that, at that point in time but but that's so that, don't that's, give up on your dream yeah well, but, but that's Evelyn. Unfortunately, we're at the end of end of time. But that the, yeah, for the show. But that's a real powerful. So you had a really good job, but then you followed your passion, and you took a yes. step back. That that yes. sets you up to take three steps forward, and so yes. that's what that's people true. need to know that that you should be doing what you're passionate about. Don't do what mm -hmm. other people tell you you should be doing, because right. oftentimes you're not going to be doing that. And so. Um, uh, this is it. Any, any final word uh, before we, uh, we close? But this has been great. You have the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. mindset. Uh, I, I, it's valuable information for people who are looking into their career. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I want to thank you for, for being on and congratulate you with all that mm -hmm. you've done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's okay to change. change. You know, right. there's okay to right. change. If you see that path that you're going in is not what you really feel comfortable in. And I always felt that a person should be passionate about what they do. Yes. You don't want to yes. take a job that's just a job. You want right. to be, you want to feel good in that job. So exactly. think of it that way as well. well. Well, Evelyn, Dr. Evelyn Nelson, thank you so much for being an entrepreneur state of mind. You are a tremendous role model and an amazing person. And so, uh, so thank you. I want to thank all of you for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind, and we will see you next week. Again, I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. Have a great week. Thank you for having me.